Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast, episode number 140 of the show. I'm Ramon Mejia, and I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news reviews, and of course, author interviews. And this week, uh, I have a lot of new reviews for you, but before I get there, I want to make sure I give a quick shout out to Michael Nicholas uh, for his very generous donation to the podcast via PayPal. Uh, he's helped keep this podcast running uh, ad-free and uh and free to everyone who wants it. Uh, so thank you, Michael, for being generous. Uh, I have uh, nine new little bit of reviews for everybody else, and including Michael. Hi, everybody. Um, including uh, Dungeon Desolation, uh, which by the time most people will be watching this will be out for everybody. Uh, it does come out on November the 2nd. It's the fourth book in the Divine Dungeon series. Uh, also being reviewed this week is going to be Dark of Chronicles, book number two, Survivors. Uh, then after that will be Beginnings, Peaks of Power, book number one. Then it's going to be Monster Core. Uh, after that will be Warlock, Reign of Blood, a little bit of novel. Then after that will be Zombie Slayer, a little PG Apocalypse. Then after that will be Necromancer System, a dark fantasy, a little RPG, book number one. Then after that it's going to be Base Status Online, An Unlikely Heroes, a little RPG Journey. And last but not least, it'll be Murder World, a little RPG novel. So there we go. Got nine nice reviews coming up for you. But before being in there, we're going to go into Lit RPG News. <laughs> And in Lit RPG news, we're going to begin with uh, some news from Blaze Corvin. Uh, this last week, he put out some cover art for his super secret collab project that he's been working on with William D. Rand. Um, he didn't give very many details about what the project is, uh, but he did mention that it would be launching early December. So uh, definitely trying to build up some buzz about his latest collaborative project uh, with another very successful um, author. Uh, in our genre so uh, it's a very nice cover art it has um some very i don't know elemental goddish kind of tones to it um so but you know i see a monk i see a guy with a with a spear uh two ladies with various animal accoutrements i guess i'm not sure but uh, they're both good writers and i'm more than happy to check out anything that they are working on together so there you go uh also um in other news kevin mclaughlin who's the author of the Lord of series of Valhalla Online um, and 40 other novels, uh, was interviewed about his book on writing called You Must Write. Um, it's a very interesting interview with some good advice about being a professional writer. And if you're going to take advice from someone about writing, might as well be somebody who's actually successful at it. Uh, but even just looking at like the interview questions, very interesting uh, philosophy based upon uh, Heinlein's rules, apparently. And and I, I really like the like practical um, advice portion of it. Uh, so definitely, a uh, interview to check out. Uh, and I'm sure the book is just as good. Uh, but there you go. Some good stuff from one of the authors in our genre. Um, now, uh, in our last bit of Little Bridget news, the land predators, chaos book, uh, chaos seed book number seven has been nominated in the category for best fantasy novel of 2018 on Goodreads. Um, the novel is going to begin some very big names and if you want to vote for it we'll have a link in the show notes so you can check it out so it'll take like 30 seconds click on the link vote for whoever you want to uh, but one of the novel is a little rpg novel so there you go a lot of people like that series so uh now let's see uh out into out now uh these are novels that have come out uh recently haven't had a chance to read them but i'm letting you know that they are out now for you to enjoy including super sales and superheroes um, by William D. Rand, which is, again, out now. Uh, as is Neverfall, Mark of the Hero, uh, in Sorcerer's Quest, uh, is also out as the Olympic novel. As is Vasari Online, Odyssey, which is the third book in that series. Uh, the novel Seeker of Secrets, A Search for Heroes, um, is out from, from Nick Davis right now. Um, as is Death Awoken, a game lit little bitty series, Death God System book number one. That's out right now as well. Um, Breaking Bard is also out. So there we go. All kinds of new stuff. Uh, new lit RPG audiobooks that are out is a competitive advantage, Nor Hazard series book number two by Lace Corvin. Also out is uh, the Renegades, Bards of Barleona book number one. Uh, book number two in this series should be coming out, I believe, November the 19th. 
Uh, but the audiobook version of this is out now. Um, as is the audiobook version of A Dead Rogue, an NPC's Path, book number two. Um, we recently reviewed the second, and I believe it's the last book in the series of that one of an ebook version recently, uh, but this is the first book in that series, the audiobook version. Um, also out as an ebook, I'm sorry, audiobook, is Vortena. Everybody loves Large Chefs Volume 3. The ebook version of the GGS came out like last week. We were just talking about it. Um, and the audiobook is already out, so good for you folks uh, at, at Assembly Theater if you've been working hard to try to get those two published and out at about the same time. So good for you folks. Um, on to upcoming liturgy. This is just where I read up a bunch of stuff that's coming out in the near future that I know about. And honestly, this is a really important list for a lot of people because um, even just like with my recent searches on Amazon, like half of the stuff on this list doesn't show up in like a general search for lit RPG, which is really weird because a lot of them are very specific tags saying, oh, a lit RPG adventure, a lit RPG saga or whatever it is. Um, so I, it, authors, if you uh, want your story to be included on this list, and it's of course lit RPG, um, feel free to let me know. Give me cover art or send me cover art and or released it or whatever it is or the links to the to the pre-order whatever it is that way people can have a, a good source of like where literally stories are coming out at and at what time so they can kind of schedule there <laughs> sometimes their paychecks because uh being addicted to liberty lists can be kind of expensive i know okay uh beginning with oh the, on november the third the world tree the duchess of hammer's second dive begins uh that's the second book in the World Tree Online series. Uh, it'll be out on November the 3rd again. November the 4th, it'll be Curse Mancer Black Flame Online, book number one, a Little BG adventure. Also out on November the 8th, it'll be the Parallel Sci Fi Little BG. Um, on November the 15th, it is going to be the Feedback Loot number eight. Again, I don't have a cover after that, so the author just told me. Um, on November the 16th, it'll be Steel Soul, uh, Yavilia, book number one. On November the 18th, Guardians of the Round Table, book number three. On November 19th, that was correct. The Song of Shadows, Bard of Barley, book number two, which is the um, follow-up for that other audiobook that we just talked about. Uh, on November 20th, it's Island Kingdom's War, Evolution Online, book number three. Um, November 22nd, the Camelon Realms, book number four, will be out, Fate of Camelon. On November the 30th, Eden's Gate, book number five, The Omen. Uh, December the 10th, Hero Level Up, book number two. On December the 16th, Free Haven Online, Winter Dungeonland, book number three in that series. Uh, December the 19th, uh, one I'm really looking forward to personally, uh, Dungeon Mauling, uh, the third book in the Good Guys series. And on January the 9th, uh, 2019, it'll be Level Up, The Knockout. Now, this is the first book, and again, in a parallel storyline uh, to the Level Up series. Um, but it is, again, different main characters, so I just set up. Okay, there we go. That's all the stuff for new um, upcoming stuff. On to new releases and reviews. And new releases and reviews going to be begin with the review on Dungeon Desolation, the Divine Dungeon, book number four. four. Okay, it is 317 pages, $4.99, it's available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. The necromatic armies are on the warpath and nowhere is safe. Even the presumed sanctuary of the floating dungeon controlled by Cal is threatened. The leadership of nearly all the sentient monarchies has been wiped out, and only the races most suited to repelling the advancing darkness have an intact chain of command. Cal learns quickly that the most pressing threat is not the far-off war, but is instead those entrusted with the general population's protection. As it turns out, the idea of having a flying dungeon for your people is, a t is tempting indeed. Dale has been facing his trials and tribulations better than anyone else could have hoped for, but when the war takes a turn for the worst, his duties are forcibly assumed by another. Since his only chance of survival is painful and rigorous advancement, Dale must learn if his strength of will can develop into strength alone. If not, the world itself may be at risk. There you go. So that's a good description. Um, and this is already the fourth book in the series, so if you're, if you're not a fan of this, you're not... You know, nothing's probably going to change that. But if you're, uh, uh, if you've been going along with it, you're probably going to love this one. It's just how much you have the past. Um, it's a good entry in the series. It doesn't disappoint in any way, shape, or form. The story is filled with plenty of humor, adventure, cultivation, and some pretty awesome battles. Like this review is very easy because I always enjoy everything from that particular author. Um, and there's some genuinely surprising story twists that I won't spoil. Uh, but I think most fans will really be pleased with where the story is going. I think it's some very interesting things happening with it so there you go i'm gonna again i don't want to spoil anything uh gets a score of 7.8 out of 10 
easy review. Had a good time with it. Really enjoyed it. And that's 7.8 out of 10 for Dungeon Desolation, the Divine Dungeon, book number four. There we go. Okay, on to Dark Horse Chronicles, book number two, Survivors, written by Dave Wilmarth. It is 364 pages, $4.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. And here's the author's description. Mace and Sherry continue to search for survivors among the undead, even as they struggle to stay alive themselves. While working to raise their stink levels with the game, the new, dunge- the new couple pursues the quest they've picked up, explore a dungeon or two, and work to stabilize the game role they hope to live in. With the undead world above closing in, will they have time to figure out how to save themselves and other survivors? Uh, so for those of you who don't remember what this novel is about, um, this is a new series from David Marth. He is combining um, a, I'm going to say, zombie apocalypse kind of concept in the world um, with a fantasy MMORPG in the game world. Uh, and the, the fundamental premise is that the whole world has, has suffered from this like massive devastating, um, I want to say it's the disease because it affects more than like people. Uh, it affects all, all organic matter, but essentially the world is, is dying and like creatures are mutating. And it, it, if you're infected, if you're touched by an infection, you'll return that kind of stuff. Um, and so the real world storyline is very much, like uh, zombie apocalypse survival stuff. Um, but the main character and the secondary character and the other main character are able to go into a virtual reality world to kind of relax and decompress and hopefully try to find other survivors in, you know, through the game network uh, who are, are, are there, right? Uh, and so that's where the virtual reality fantasy survey world comes in. Um, and it's an interesting story. It really is. Uh, full disclosure, I did receive an advanced copy for review. I purchased it when it became available. I also forgot to say that I got an advanced copy for the uh, Divine Dungeon series. Also pre-ordered that one. Um, and this is a good story. In, in the Dark of Chronicles, it's a good addition to the series. Um, there are a lot of new characters, both in the real world and in the game storyline, there's adventures. Um, there's probably a scene that's going to make somebody cry uh, in the story. That's like kind of sad. Um, but again, it, it's it's an entertaining ride, both in the virtual world and in the real world. I think that combination of those two things, um, again, brings something kind of new to the table. It's not as new, obviously, as book one, uh, but it's still kind of an entertaining thing because it gets a lot of times in the story, it's like, oh, the game world goes on for a little bit, and then like, there's a break for the real world stuff, and it's just enough of a distraction so that when you return to the game world, like, oh, it feels, it doesn't feel like it's um, getting boarding or tedious. So it's always good. Um, the cast of the story uh, in the in the game world, it's getting a little crowded, and it's very, it, for me, it's feeling like, oh, get Grace from Chronicles, and there's a lot of characters in the story, and again, they're all very interesting. Um, but at some point, I'm like, I forgot who this person was because uh, I've so many new people are being introduced sometimes. Um, and that's, that's just me, of course, uh, but it's still fun to mentor. Um, so there you go. That's a fun story. Gets a score of 7.5 out of 10. That's the Dark of Chronicles book number two, Survivors, with a score of 7.5 out of 10. Again, easy review, entertaining story. Okay, on to our third review, Peaks of Power. Um, beginning, it's beginnings, Peaks of Power book number one, written by Paul Campbell Jr., it is 360 pages, $4.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited, and here's the author's description. There's always somewhere to go, someone to defeat. At least that's what Ryan believed until he ran out of challenges, adventures, and stories. Bored with his real life, with, a, with his life as a casual player, he slipped easily into the lifestyle of, of a professional gamer. After reaching the pinnacles of success, an email arrived from the mysterious Beta Academy. With his best friend and self-proclaimed bodyguard, Dimitri, he decides to take a chance and accept the strange offer contained within. Overconfident in his skills, Ryan thinks that he'll defeat this game as easily as every other, but that confidence is shaken and shattered within the first 15 minutes. This wasn't a standard game with haptic chairs or gloves. This was the real thing. Ryan and Dimitri must learn the heights of the peaks of power and what it will take to achieve their summit. Um, yeah, I guess that's a pretty decent explanation of the premise of the story um full disclosure i received a man's copy for review um i purchased the novel when it became available um this novel originally came out last week uh and i had an original review for it then because i got an advanced copy um i did not review this novel last week though because uh there were some last minute edits to the story uh that definitely improved the quality of it. So the previous review ver- review of the story didn't quite apply. That original review um, pointed out 
some serious inconsistencies with the story and the plot and the game mechanics, like game game mechanic breaking stuff that were just like serious inconsistencies uh, that probably would have ruined the story for a lot of people. But um, I pointed that to the publisher of the, of the novel um, because I again I had a re- early review copy and I, I didn't think it was like oh, these things seem fixable. The novel hasn't come out, and I told them about it, and they worked really hard to kind of fix the issues that I pointed out. Uh, and so I reread it. I actually did a side by side comparison of both the original version that I got and the new version that I got just to see what changes there were. Um, so this took a really lot of time, but um, I, I noticed that again, most of those can see that, that I had pointed out were completely fixed and a lot of work went into like improving the story. Uh, so this review is kind of a combination of like, oh, that th- there are still issues of the story, but um, it has been improved. Okay, now story-wise, this it turns out to be a setup for a character. Deba- um, the novel turns out to be like a, it's it's a transport issue game world. Um, I want to say like the beginning is set up for character development. Then there's a ton of training, and then there's a tournament that kind of loses its purpose um, for for existing by the end. Um, and I want to say that much of the story isn't badly written. It is predictable, and some parts are heavily handed. And this is in the new version, of course. Um, the original version had a lot of other technical um, issues, but the story and telling issues, I think they still carried over. Like the, the, those fundamental storytelling issues that I have, which I'll talk about in a second, um, there's still issues. Okay. Um, the beginning of the story was originally one of the hardest parts to get through for me. After the setup where the main characters were introduced, Ryan and Dimitri, um, they're in the game. They're in the game pretty, pretty fairly quickly. Um, but Ryan, the main character of the story, is just so unlikable in the original version. He was like so unlikable and so he almost became a caricature of like a super flawed person. He was full of bravado, overconfidence. He challenged everybody. Uh, he was constantly rude. He gets gutting over absolutely anything. He was really a jerk to everybody, including his parents. And it really didn't make sense in the original version why that was the case. And while I understand, you know, from a writing point of view, that the character was intentionally written in a way to give him like something to fix and improve as the story goes on. He was really such a huge jerk in the original version that he, he was completely unlikable um, without any redeeming qualities. Now in the revised version, which again is the, is the version most people are getting. So unless you have ordered the pre-order, um, you're probably not even going to see this. We're not going to see this portion entirely in the reviewed, in the revised version of the story. Um, the angry character character version of Ryan, he got some nice revisions. And he's still a jerk, though. He really is. Um, but there were some hints inserted into the story for as to why he's kind of a total jerk. Um, and there was enough character development between Ryan and Dimitri to make the personality shift that happens in the story, rarely on the story, um, feel a little more natural. And I think it's enough of a change in the story that it can create an, enough empathy for the main character that most that I thought was almost impossible before. Um, so at this point, if you don't like the main character, um, if you stick it out, his his personality is going to improve. And so I, I, I've actually seen this in a lot of the other reviews for the, for the story right now. Is that one of the biggest issues for them for for readers have been uh, for the negative reviews that the found the main character unlikable in the very beginning of the person when they kind of dropped out um that personality and does improve um and again if you if you've read the again revised version which again most people are probably, 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 that's the version people get um that there are hints of as to oh there are background issues and there are um you know hints at why so it becomes a little more palatable um, the portion of the story that really didn't change at all was definitely the middle section of the story. There's a ton of training in the story and it's probably the best thing about the story. Uh, it has tons of amazing detail, uh, but also special martial art techniques, skills, magic, all kinds of really good stuff. It, it's very detailed. Um, and I think people like that section the most, um, from, a, from the positive reviews I've, I've read and my personal experience reading, of course, um, I think this is probably the best done section as far as like good detail work um good like action-ish sections however on a storytelling level this it, there's just like this huge 50 percent chunk in the middle of the story that's just training and not much else and that was probably the part that kind of got to me personally is that while i enjoy training and i thought this was again really well done it's just for like half the story which is um somewhere in the neighborhood of like over 100 and 
80 pages of the story is, is just like a block of training. And again, it's not badly written. It's just like, I wish there was more there to like kind of break it up a little bit because that would have at least um, relieved some of the, I don't want to say monotony, but like the the predictability of it. Because once you got in the training thing and nothing else really happened, it's like, oh, okay, I know what this is going to be about. I And it just kept going on and on and on. And I just wish there would have been like some breaks there just to like show progression uh, like show like what they learned and how it's actually affecting their real life. And then they can go to another training section and, and, and kind of repeat like, oh, there's another power up. And then, oh, this is the actual results and how it's actually influencing. But instead it was just like, oh, train, 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 train. And then like end stuff. You know what I mean? And and that for me is just like, oh, that got a little tedious um, at some point. Uh, let's see what else. Um, yeah, there we go. Um, okay. Uh, now the gimme can the story. Um those again i think the game mechanics were probably the place that were most improved from like the um rougher version to the one most people get um there were like some seriously serious inconsistencies in the original version um and again m the majority of those have been corrected there are still some issues though um for example the readers aren't sure what character she in the story and said there are like handful of times where the main where the characters tell each other what their stats are but the on the game mechanic side it's like those stats don't really have a reference point so like even though you see the, the characters tell each other oh this is what my stats are for strength and for stamina or whatever uh, and then the guy says the same thing is like oh those are those good numbers are those bad numbers are they like super low or super high like that, that's not ever really revealed to the audience so like those numbers don't really have a ton of meaning um, characters also learn skills and magic in the story. And even though you see like a lot of notifications and skill no and, and skill increases, they don't really seem to mean much. Um, and there's throughout the story, like the main character learns a ton of skills, but like, even though he's practicing them, like you don't ever see more skill increases. So it's like, it's kind of a contradiction in like the, the way that the author chose to like show things. He definitely shows like the main character is getting more powerful that entire story. Yeah. There's, that's not, an issue. that's not an issue. It's just that there's inconsistency in, in some of the game mechanics, unfortunately. Um, magic, though a big part of the story feels less game like and more like fantasy or possibly cultivation oriented. Um, there are definitely some scenes in the, in the story where you're like, Oh, I bet you the author was watching Lav Average of the Last Emitter uh, with some of the magic skill systems in the story. And that's not necessarily bad. It's just like, oh, okay. But that's kind of where you see it's drawing. It's not from like real, like well-described, well-planned out, like actual game mechanic descriptions. It's like, oh, it feels a little more like one would be magic, cultivation. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like, oh, that's something that I wish would have been done slightly different so that the game mechanics felt like, again, they were impactful to like what the main, what the characters were doing with their training. Um, the characters level in the story. Um, and it's a system that has that, that kind of, it's wildly shifts mid stories, like what kind of leveling system this is. So at the beginning of the story, um, someone levels and they get 10 free stat points to distribute. Then about like midway through the novel, the, it shifts. It just like changes. Like all of a sudden it's like, Oh, um, now when they level, they get like a flat, like five, uh, more stat points to all their stats, um, which is like equal to like 10, like 20 stat points. So as they level essentially after certain points, like, oh, no more like free stats. Like you get 20, 20, 20 ones that are just five to everything. And like, that was a shift. And and though in the latest edition of the novel, that shift um, in leveling is explained much earlier. So it feels less awkward as it happens. There's no explanation in the story as to why that shift actually occurs. Like there's no, like, oh, this is why the game mechanics are slowly changing. It's just kind of still happens, even though, again, it's like foreshadowed. So that it's not such a weird, abrupt change. It's like, oh, I don't understand why. And then again, for me, I'm a game mechanic nerd, of course. Um, and, and, and when game mechanics are consistent, or at least there's not like a, a good, like solid explanation of why they're changing suddenly, um, it, it sticks out of my brain and that kind of draws away my enjoyment from a story. Um, ultimately, the levels and stats on the story, to me, kind of felt like they lost their meaning. Um, there's no XP in the novel, which is fine. And the levels seem to be kind of arbitrarily given as characters accomplish something, whether they fight or train or attending a lecture. Um, the characters have leveled. And it's, it's for me, when I was reading the story, I was like, oh, I don't, I like the training system I do. Um, it's just that as the levels were handed out, it felt like it was like really kind of arbitrary. And I think at one point... Um, in the original version, it was like, oh, somebody got a level from dreaming. And even though that was like changed again in like the revised version, um, it was just kind of explained. It was like, oh, it was because of 
uh, like background experience gain that we're not going to show you. And I'm like, oh, that's that's how that changed. But again, it always kind of made me feel like, oh, these these mechanics, these leveling this leveling portion, and like the stat stuff is like, oh, it's it's not as impactful in the story as I would have loved to have like seen it be. Um, you know, uh, so that's kind of what it's like. And, and as far as stats goes, like they would get descriptions, they would like them changing and like faster, stronger, smarter. Um, but as the story went on and the characters became like more overpowered, like those changes just became like, oh, it's like we go from like a level, like uh, I think at one point the main character starts at like 15 for like uh, 15 points for like a particular stat. And then by the end of the story, it's like, oh, it's like 70. And like the, the, there was no like real like, um, grounded representation of like what those incremental changes were in the story even though like as the story went on like you numbers were given to you like oh you got a increase of five points in your strength or whatever there was no like no like numerical by like oh how does this actually affect your damage how does this affect like how much how you how fast you are on, on a ground level um and that's just like a choice thing in manix but again um overall again there are some definitely marked improvements from like the different versions um it still has like pacing and storytelling issues, at least to me. Uh, the middle of the story lacks variety and it's almost all training. And the end to me didn't feel like it really meant anything except for as a place to show off how overpowered the characters got. And the end has its own issues and I don't want to spoil like what happens, um, but they were like new. Again, I'm trying not to spoil it, but the end just kind of felt like, oh, it doesn't really matter because as the story progresses, as the polling progresses, like, oh, the 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 point of the story is like suddenly shifted to like something like on a much grander scale. So why are you s s messing around at the end of the story with like, Oh, this, this thing that happens. I'm like, and the entire last section just felt like, Oh, this is just them showing off. Like how, wh how powerful they're going. There's really no like real meaning to the story beyond that to me. And I was like, Oh, that was just a little disappointing. Like the action is really nice in the story. Like I don't want you to think that I, this is a badly, written story necessarily on a technical level it's, it's fine the fight scenes are really good the training is really nice um it's just that a lot of the story didn't work the beginning was really hard for me because the main character was just really unlikable he's a total jerk um and and i think that's probably going to be the hardest hurdle for a lot of readers to get through if they can get through that great they're probably gonna have a nice time with like a lot of the elements as long as they can they don't mind like the long half of the story is just training um the end for me was just like oh that's good fights, but like it felt like it wasn't <laughs> impactful to the story because all these things just suddenly appear and like there's a bunch of like weird conflicts that you aren't seeing before and it's like, oh, now they have to be resolved and it felt like they were just there for, for show and a lot of, we're just to like cap it off or something, you know what I mean? And for me, it's just like, oh, this isn't a bad story. It's not getting a bad score. It's just that for me, it wasn't good. And a lot of other readers have really enjoyed it. Like if you look at the reviews of the novel, it has some nice reviews. A lot of people have really enjoyed what it is. But for me, it's just like, eh, it didn't work. And that's mostly because of the game mechanics. The game mechanics for me, when I read a literary story, I, I'm coming for the game mechanics all the time. And if those aren't done well, if those are don't feel impactful to the story, if they don't feel like they, they or they lose their meaning or they're just inconsistencies, um, it. I just don't enjoy it as much. And that's me. Uh, so for me, it gets to score six out of 10. That's beginnings, peaks of power, book number one, uh, with score six out of 10 from me. And hopefully folks, if you go read it, you enjoy it more than I did. So there we go. Okay, uh, next review. It's going to be Dante King's uh, Monster Core book number one. It is 343 pages. It is $4.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. Dominic Thompson became an influential dungeon core and is given a task, is given one task. Make his dungeon renowned throughout the entire world by killing adventurers in the most gruesome ways possible. With this new power, he infuses his soul with a tainted elf avatar so he can walk amongst mortals. To become the greatest, he must make the other dungeon cores submit to him, and that means shattering their jeweled hearts or seducing their avatars. Luckily for Dom, the dungeon avatars are beautiful monster girls, but they're also the fiercest warriors in the realms. And there's a fine line between murder and seduction. So there we go. Uh, the author does have a disclosure saying this dungeon core story contains light RP elements and harem elements. So at least he's honest about it. Okay. Um, the actual dungeon building portion of the story doesn't actually impel to after the 30% mark. Um, but once that's, that starts, there's plenty of dungeon goodness for everybody who likes that, that subgenre of Lord RPG. Um, the story is pretty basic. 
a dungeon builds and designs traps, someone dungeon dives, and it's kind of a repeat cycle. The dungeon growth, uh, the dungeon grows in complexity, minion varieties, and people that come through are harder to kill. It's a simple premise, a simple concept, and it's good action. Um, on the game mechanic side, things are pretty basic. Um, again, the author says it's light, little RPG. I don't know if it's necessarily light, but it's not a complex game system. Um, it is intentionally skewed by the author, though, in the dungeon's favor. Um, the dungeon collects resources from the mountains or from killing creatures to fuel the creation of traps and monsters. The variety of traps in the dungeon isn't great um another with a variety of creatures but it does this job of like killing adventurers coming through um i did like that the dungeon mix and match schematic elements as he absorbed new weapons and from fallen enemies i i like that aspect of, of like the mechanics of it um however the dungeon system again has an inherent exploit where the dungeon would create monsters and then kill them for more essence that he put into their creation so this is a little spoiler but essentially like uh like there's a created flaw here for the for the dungeon to exploit for almost inf infinite um resources to improve his dungeon and i think it's a cheat and i think it's a little bit of lazy on the game mechanic side which bothers me a little bit um like the, the, essentially the dungeon can create monsters at, at some certain point in the story and he basically discovers uh that he can create them for like a, a nominal amount like we'll say 14 points but then when he kills them he gets 15 points of that resource back so he's always going to have a net gain no matter how many of these monsters he makes uh, and then kills um, and he's having his own dungeon creatures kill them um, as he makes them. And so essentially he's creating his own you know, like an infinite pool of, of resources instead of having the character or the, the dungeon go out and search for resources or strive for, you know, adventures to come through or lures or whatever the case is. And to me, that was just a little bit lazy and it kind of like knocked down my enjoyment some. Um, but again, that's probably the, you know, the only thing I can kind of complain about as far as the game mechanics go. Um there are a couple other places in the story where like they're suddenly introduced game mechanics um, just to like make someone like uh, pose a challenge to the dungeon, become like really powerful without putting effort into it. Um, but that's kind of as far as like the game mechanics goes overall, the story, it is good action, good dungeon creation. Um, it's not a perfect story and it's rigged again in favor of the dungeon, which, you know, made me knock down my enjoyment a little bit, but it's still a fun story. Um, the only added part that dragged down my enjoyment is the harem aspect of it. Um, and the one graphic sex scene. Um, it's the, the sex scene seems out of place and it kind of only seems like it's added to the story in my opinion for advertising purposes, but I don't, I don't, that's, that's the author's choice. Um, I get that having sexy monster girls on your cover does increase sales and it increases interest from, um, from a readership. Um, in this case, in the story, you know, there aren't a lot of graphic sex and there's just, there's really just like the one, there are a couple of like fade to black sex scenes in the story beyond that, but, um, they're, they're very easily skippable. So as a dungeon story, it gets a uh, score of like 7.2 out of 10 for me. It's, it was entertaining, not the best one I've ever read, but it's not the worst. And I think it does the dungeon stuff, uh, decent enough that people who enjoy that kind of story are, are going to enjoy this. So there you go. A uh, good score of 7.2 out of 10. Uh, that's monster core. There you go. Okay. Um, on to our next review. It's going to be Warlock Reign of Blood, a lit RPG novel written by Edwin McRae. It is 234 pages, $5.34. And it is not available on Kindle Limited, so it's a little on the pricey side at about two cents a page. Um, here's the author's description. Swords, spells, stats, and slaughter. Mark's life of forklift, forms, debts, and divorce is gone. Now is a warlock in an RPG called Reign of Blood. Th through Dark Forest, a rugged mountain, and ancient ruins, Mark will fight against slayers... Uh, slavers, savage creatures, and the forces of insidious corruption. He will master magical tomes, cast spells of fire and fear, imbue his weapons with arcane might, and seep through walls like mist. Quest by quest, level by level, Mark will find purpose, power, people to live and love, laugh with, and perhaps even a little love. Mark has been given a second chance at life, and he's going to die as many times as it takes to keep it. So there you go. Um... I don't think the novel description really does a good job, but like telling you the plot of the story, even on a fundamental level. Um, so this is my little bitch. Uh, the main character, Mark, is a transported to a fantasy RPG world where he alone seems to have the power to respawn after dying. He uses this unique ability along with the magic and sword fighting skills of his uh, warlock class to help a peace loving town against an invading group of slavers. And I think that's a much better <laughs> description of what actually happens. And again, that's, that's not particularly spoilery. It is told in another way in the novel description, but this is just 
just a little more clear. Okay, um, that's that's what the story is basically. Uh, game mechanic wise, there's nothing really revolutionary here. It has the fairly standard XP and leveling mechanics. Uh, though the main character gets to choose between some very interesting spells when he levels, the most unique part is probably the classes that people have. These are not always your standard warrior, mage, you know, cleric kind of classes. Um, I actually really liked some of the unique um, twists on some of the classes that the characters in the story have, including the warlock build, which is again a, a mage fighter class. But also, I think I like the figurist a little bit better, which is a almost com combination flesh bender healer class kind of combo i thought it was a really cool um like twist on on on, on like a healer class um story-wise it's a decent combination like slice of life and chosen one um the common is good there are a few characters that are really two-dimensional um but the world building is done well enough that the conflict between like the two nations in the story has some depth to it and I, th I thought that was really well done by the author because a lot of Slice of Life stories seem like, oh, it's just like, this is the main character. He goes into adventures, he does some stuff, and then you end, right? Um, in this particular case, that wasn't the case. Like, there was definitely an effort maybe by the author to flesh out this world a little bit, and that there's history given for, for both sides of the conflict. Um, and even at one point, it, the story is even told from the point of view of the bad guys. Um, so it was nice to see like, oh, this is the bad guy's thoughts. So this is like his point of view of like, oh, the, the reason he's doing these things. Um, and, and that was a nice contrast, like, oh, just the good guy's kind of point of view. So I, I can, I, I really actually enjoyed that particular aspect of the storytelling. Overall, it's a decent novel, decent action, good adventure, um, and good storytelling. So uh, it's priced a little high for me, but um, it's an entertaining story. Gets a score of 7.4 out of 10. Um, Warlock, Reign of Blood, a little RPG novel with a score of 7.4 out of 10. There we go. Okay, on to our next review, which is Zombie Slayer, a little bit of apocalypse written by Cameron Milan. Uh, this is the same author as the uh, Desire series. Uh, it is 263 pages. There's no price point right now. It's not available on Kindle Unlimited. I actually think the author might have um, pulled the story from 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 Amazon for some reason. Um, but I read it, so it's getting a review. So if you happen to see it later under a different cover art or something, or it comes back, here it is. Um, the rules of reality have changed. All types of zombies have appeared with only one goal, kill the living. Eric and his schoolmates must survive by adapting and growing stronger, but that's easier said than done. The undead get stronger with every passing day, and that's not even mentioning the blood moons. Even worse, the military and police seem to have disappeared. How will they acquire food? How will they survive? And that's the novel description. This is a simple review. It's it, the author, again, I think the author pulled the story because it was getting bad reviews. Uh, but the short version of the review is basically that this is kind of a very boring and repetitive story. Um, it's basically more of an XP grind in the zombie apocalypse than it is a proper, like, tense zombie apocalypse story. Like, the like the game mechanics aren't horrible. Like, there's some interesting aspects to it. It's basically an RPG apocalypse story um, with zombies. And, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that the zombie side of things was never tense. And I don't think that part was really well done at all. Um, the game mechanic side was pretty simple, but it was like the zombie apocalypse side that was never tense. You never felt like anybody was really in trouble. You never felt like there was really, um, any threat to anybody, even though, and like, and the fact that, okay, this is minor spoiler, like the main characters are high school students. And out of like the 800 students in the school and the 50 members of staff, the only people who are willing to fight in the entire zombie apocalypse in this part of the story is like four people, like four or five people. You know, and so that, that there were like the little story flaws, like, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, but I guess a small thing is it doesn't really matter because there's, if, if, the, if the novel's been pulled down. But for me, it uh, gets a score of five out of 10. I thought it was kind of boring, basically. So, Zombie Slayer, Liberty, um, Lit RPG Apocalypse uh, with a score of five out of 10. So, there you go. Um, next one Necromancer System, a dark fantasy liberty book number one by Mr. Dojo. Okay, it is 457 pages, $2.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. Um, it's also available online, I believe. So, there you go. Um, here is the author's description. On the continent of Skyhaven, there are only two paths in which a sorcerer can embark on, namely, the path of light and the path of darkness. In a world filled with heroes and villains, the most nefarious practitioner... Prota prota Sorry, practitioner of the dark of the path of the darkness was ambushed by more than a thousand sorcerers of the path of light. After a thrilling battle that lasted more than thirty days, the sorcerer 
of the path of light triumphed in the end. At the moment of his death, a blinding gray object exited his body and disappeared into a void. 10,000 years later, a young boy from a war-torn country is reincarnated into a body of a younger sorcerer from the continent of Skyhaven. At that same moment, he suddenly heard a strange sound, followed by the words, Ding! Welcome to Earth! Congrat- oh gosh. Welcome, Earthling! Congratulations on inheriting the Necromancer system. Do you wish to begin your journey? Ding! Uh, and then the author does warn the MC is a evil protagonist slash antihero. I don't think it's anti or it is definitely evil in a lot of ways. Uh, so that is definitely at least the author warning you. Okay. Um, price wise is really well priced 450 some pages. This is a huge chunk of a novel, um, for two ninety nine or on Kindle limited. Um, I should warn you, there are some technical writing issues. Um, I'm not sure if there's actually translation issues or not, or if it's just not written by someone whose first language is English, but there were definitely, um, issues with the technical writing and, and most of the reviews, on the story, um, actually, we, they they mentioned this needs major editing. This may be a good story, but like the editing has is, is a big deal. So, if those type type of things bother you, don't read this. It's really in the pool. Like even just reading the or looking at the novel description, you can see multiple errors, like multiple like really like bad words, missing capitalizations, and that's just in like in the, the description. Um, in almost every single paragraph of the story, there are mistakes and there are like just errors that, that seem simple. Mistaken words, um, the wrong words, um, mixed tenses, a bunch of like small little details, but that is going to drive some people crazy. Um, I should also warn you that there is a very dark story, and I mean super dark. There um, are scenes of extreme violence, graphic sex in four places, um, and even rape. So if any of that bothers you, don't read this. This is not for you. Um, and honestly, in the end, it wasn't for me either. Okay. Uh, story-wise, this is a reincarnating RPG world where the main character is put not in the newborn body, but in a dead one. Um, that one that happened to belong to a noble one that had just happened to be murdered by his siblings because he might he might have gotten the throne. The main character gets necromancer system powers that, uh, and uses this familiar RPG system to level up by absorbing death energy from people he's killed, mounds of the undead, and other methods he invents. The main character is faced with a family full of people that are intent on backstabbing, poisoning, or murdering him to become the family error. So, of course, he has to get them first um, by being as dark and conniving as possible. And that's kind of my description of the story. Um, this is a really dark story where everyone is brutal and everyone is evil. There are no heroes in the story whatsoever. There's a lot of intrigue. Um, there's a ton of exposition. And there's a lot of brutal descriptions. The RPG mechanics are relatively uncomplex, and they're shown in the main character gets some XP, levels, gain stats, um, and the, the system is shown throughout the entire novel, so it is definitely a little RPG story. It's very consistent in that respect, um, and there are a couple of neat spells, I thought, um, that kind of auto-gather XP that I thought was like really cool use of necromancy, so kudos to Dothra in that respect. Um, overall, though, this story didn't work for me for a couple of reasons. Um, the many technical writing issues. Even for me, there's like it hurt my brain sometimes. Um, they're just like errors on almost every single paragraph of the story. Two, I'm not a big fan of intrigue. Um, and eventually that aspect of the story got a little less entertaining. Um, I don't mind the dark nature of most of the story, but um, there's a line that got kind of that got crossed for me. Um, two out of the four sex graphic sex in the novel, they just felt random. I didn't, I, I, they were distracting. I, I don't, they are what they are. Um, the last two, um, sex scenes in the story though they are their rape stories and that for me kind of crossed the line it's at, at one point it's like it's semi-inferred like magical coercion coercion by the bad guys and i was like uh, maybe it's like but then when again the the rape just kind of crossed the line that's that, that's what i'll put it for you um if you can get past the, all that stuff and if you're a fan of like intrigue and dark really dark stories with no hero you might enjoy this more than but for me um, the, the rape section of it kind of pushed it over line where it went from like, oh, this doesn't work for me to me actively disliking it. And it's just, it's definitely that last one. And the story is like, oh, I don't like this suddenly anymore. And for me, again, I understand that we're all adults, different things for different people. For me, that just, that kind of story element definitely crosses a line into like automatically, I, I, I don't like this anymore. Um, and, but that's me. I definitely recognize that that's, that's the case. So for me, it gets a score of four to 10. I did not like this. Um, Necromancer system, a dark fantasy liturgy book. Number one with a score of four out of 10. And it's very specific for that last reason. The other things I could probably work with. Um, it's just, yeah, sorry. Okay. On to our next review. 
is base status online an unlikely heroes lit rpg journey written by e and Burtz. okay it is uh, three i'm sorry 442 pages two dollars and 99 cents it is not available on kindle limited uh here's the author's description Helheim Fallen Online, the next generation VR MMORPG will be released on in 2042, April the 2nd. Uh, sign up now to win a chance to be a beta tester. Willow's life hasn't been easy. She's autistic, living in a community closed off from the rest of the world for her own safety. And the only way she gets to interact with anyone is by locking into the into BASE, the bioelectrical augmented synapsis enhancement platform, and play video games. Her life revolves around playing VR MMORPGs and with her close friends and making a little extra money on the side by trading items in the game so that you can buy pizza or new games when they come out. The game she's saving up for now, Helheim Fallen Online, a Norse mythology-inspired game, said to be changing the landscape of gaming forever. Only, there are rumors going around that some people who get the beta invite for the game are are going missing. It's just a rumor until her best friend Violet wins one of the big keys and disappears. All traces gone, like she was never even there. Now Willow is fighting against the clock to not only find out where Violet went, but why more people are going missing every day. And the only way to do that is by illegally getting into Helheim Fallen Online, play the game, and expose whoever is making people disappear. And above all, make sure she doesn't get caught in the meantime and disappear herself. She has 10 days to pull it off. Okay, that's the premise of the story, and that's actually a very accurate premise. Um, and it kind of highlights the issue I have with the story. Um, this is more of a cyber thriller set in VR than it is a lit RPG. Um, there are the story is set in a VR MMORPG um, in, in several respects, um, and the main character spends a decent amount of time there, kills monsters, levels up. So that all exists, um, but in the aspect of the plot line of the story, the game mechanics and the RPG stuff don't matter one bit. And that's kind of the disappointing portion about the show, which is why it doesn't work for me. Um, instead, the, the for some reason, the main character has to go into the virtual reality world to solve the mystery of why people's avatars are being deleted and why they're being disconnected from their computer systems that control their everyday life. Um, it, it's a premise I've seen before. And it very rarely works. In this case, it doesn't, at least for me. Um, as is often the case with this premise, the story focuses on the cyber thriller aspects, which is, again, that, that's just a choice. But what ends up happening is that the RPG stuff is reduced to a side aspect um, and it's a side element. And they don't ever have like any real bearing on the story. And they're kind of used as filler or just inserted things um, to like check a little bitty box. And there's always a couple clues for me in the story that, that the game mechanics don't matter. For one, the story, the mystery portion of the story, the cyber thriller element is solved not because the main character is playing a particular game or using RPG aspects or like Adam elements. It's just, oh, she's she's using a developer aspect to like solve this mystery. Um, and if you took those elements out, like the story would still basically be the same. And that's kind of the case here. Like there would still be like big chunks of like her like like power level and like fighting monsters that would be disappearing. But like the the solving of that cyber thriller element would be exactly the same if it was not if it was set somewhere off besides like this rpg world if it was set in a like a, a more cyberpunk storyline whether she's logging to virtuality and it's like a theme park or whether it was like miniature golfing um <laughs> the 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 cyber thrill elements would still be solved exactly the same way uh and that's kind of always the thing you're like oh this this doesn't work like the, the rpg elements don't matter even though they're like they're through the story this is little rpg um, those elements really don't matter to the story. And that's always disappointing to me because that's why I come for, that's why I read Little RPG. It's because of the gaming addicts. It's because they matter to the story. Like, and, and that's just not the case here. And that's, that, that was just sad to me. Um, as a cyber thriller, it's not bad. It isn't, uh, the cyber thriller isn't really my thing in the first place, but, um, the author does a really good job, like going out of her way to like do some good world building in the beginning. Um, she describes the technical developments and the world and the social developments that kind of hedge the main character into like this this small isolated pocket in the real world but having um connections in the game world are really important to her and so the, the author really does a good job of like creating that world building and i i genuinely enjoyed that part um and she definitely does a lot good job of like justifying why being connect disconnected from the integrated computer system the base system would really be deadly so kudos for that but as an rpg it, it just wasn't good to me um there's little to no world building in game um 
and they're again, I mean, this is one of the indicators like, oh, the game stuff doesn't matter. When they're like these level jumps um, that are just completely unexplained. And they're just like maybe some rest of it. But like when the main character has these like level jumps, it's like, oh, that that, that game stuff really never mattered in the first place. Otherwise, you would be describing how the main character progressed, why is that important, like what choices they made to their character. Um, and instead, they just kind of exist. Like, oh, they, they exist so that the character can overcome an obstacle or get to a new place to continue, you know, describing that story. Um, and it's always one of the things like, oh, that that just shows me game stuff doesn't matter to the, to the storyline. That's fine. Um, and again, that's just a, a choice for the storyline. But for me, that just makes the liturgy aspect like the not matter and and so as a little bit i just didn't like this story i actively didn't like it um so it gets a score four to ten for me i i it just wasn't boring it's like oh this was this was disliked because of those reasons uh so it gets a score four to ten base status online an unlikely hero's little rpg journey with a score of four out of ten there we go okay on to our last review uh, murder world a little rpg novel um, it is 398 pages, $3.99. It is available in Kindle Limited. Here's the author's description. Perry Dunn, San Francisco corporate lawyer, is forced by his bullying boss to play the world's most popular game, the vast, ultra real, blood drenched simulation murder world. His task enhance his legal firm's prestige by earning five kills during the current tournament or get fired. When Perry crosses path with. Homicide virtuoso Mari Knight, he seizes a chance to hire her as his mentor, not realizing her game persona hides the identity of a precocious 12 year old Korean schoolgirl, Chun Suyun. As both players try to spurse a freakish gamer underbelly seething with kill crazy players, they're soon ensnared in an epic power struggle against formidable foes with a world where violence is always the solution and where murder is no longer merely a game. Um, okay, basically, this kind of feels like a mislabeling of the story more than anything. It's not actually a liturgy. Uh, it's, it's a real summary review. Uh, this is a cyberpunk competitive fighting game. In, in the story, there's one, but there's absolutely no RPG elements uh, anywhere. Um, the action isn't bad, but personally, I thought these cyberpunk elements were overdone. They were kind of boring to me. Um, and that ending, and the, honestly, the ending was so frustrating. I was like, oh, you made me go through this entire story, and that's the ending you give me? So uh, I didn't like this on, on multiple levels. Um, but mostly because it's actually not Little BG. It's advertising itself as Little BG, and it's not. And so for me, that's like, oh, that's that's a, that's 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 scored automatically for me. Um, it gets a score of four to ten because it's not actually Little RPG like it said it was. So there you go. Okay, and that's it. That's the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for hanging out with me, for listening to me talk about Little BG, the things I love, the things I don't, the things that bug me. Um, I have a list sometimes. Sorry. Um, uh, if you want to follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, YouTube. Uh, on Patreon, there are a lot of places you can hang out with us and like see the re- reviews we have for the show. If you don't want to always listen to us, um, or just see like the highlights of like a, a long list of like great reviews, we have um, I think over 600 reviews at this point on our website at littlebeachpodcast.com in a review section. If you're interested in like seeing a certain type of story or anything, and you can also follow us on YouTube, on Patreon, on our website, of course, and there are a bunch of other great Facebook pages. Um, designed around the Little BG communities and authors and readers interacting. So fun stuff. Um, of course, if you want to support the podcast and we should perform and come out all the ways to do so at the little RPG podcast.com slash support. And again, folks, thank you very much for hanging out with me this week. Um, until we can hang out again, remember to go read some little RPG. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>